Hi, I am Prashant Mishra, founder and CEO of click to cloud uh, Today I am going to talk about uh, the future of 5G, AI and the edge computing. Uh, the project that I am going to discuss today is Centaurus project, uh, which we have an open source community, well established community in combinations with Futureway, click to cloud and several other industry leaders. Today I am going to talk about uh, the design and the ideas and the contribution of various community members, how these products can be utilized into the market and the future of uh, these things and your contribution towards the community. Let's talk about what is this project all about. As uh, we talked about the future of cloud native, edge and AI, in the cloud native space, uh, Centaurus project is all about hyperscale computing. Hyperscale computing is something that has been originated from the basic infrastructure of Kubernetes. We are expanding, expanding the Kubernetes infrastructure beyond the normal limit. Our dream and the goal is to scale this infrastructure to 50,000 to 100,000 nodes at a moment. We have run some of our uh, technology test cases around this scenario and proven that the, the technology can scale up to 200,000 nodes. Centaurus project is all about scalability, low latency. Also, it supports the cloud native infrastructure along with the VMware. The project Centaurus consists of two uh, products, Arctos and Mizar, and you can find them in the community and more detail in the future uh, speech from other speakers from our community. On the edge computing side, uh, as everybody is aware of, edge is becoming a necessity as day by day where the decision making and the low latency and with the less network frequency the computing has to make the decision so there are small sites that are going to be there as an edge node uh, the many applications that we are looking at is the railway application the agriculture applications uh, sort of solar industry application cryptocurrency these are all related to the edge computing and when the edge collects the data, those data will be transformed to the private cloud or a public cloud for the further processing. The last topic I'm going to cover today is AI. The AI project in our world is called as Formex. And you can also uh, create the fork from GitHub for all these projects, uh, Centaurus, Arctos and Mizar, and the Formex project. Uh, and you can actually experiment and contribute to the community. Under the AI, we have been developing some uh, serious services that can work on the central score capability and will allow you to have a better uh, decision making uh, based on the current scenario. As click to cloud we are also developing an AI based solution uh, which can allow you to basically think more philosophically. Uh, in my world, the story is when you are born, you are only having a genetic information and beyond that, everything else is a discovery. The moment you discover an information, it becomes an historical information. Human intelligence is nothing but constant discovery and connecting it with the uh, historical information that you have preserved. On the same concept, we have wrote an uh, application called Cloud Intel in partnership with Centaurus applications. Cloud Intel has an ability to discover data center on premise or the cloud applications along with the licensing capabilities. And then we have Cloud's Brain, which runs on the CentOS infrastructure, which allows you to have a multi-cloud integration where you can actually monitor and store all the cloud activity on that system. So on the same concept of human brain, Cloud Intel does the discovery and Cloud Brain makes the decision making. That's how the whole AI to the human intelligence is mapped into our system. And to scale that system, CentOS is something that has been helping us to scale it to a massive amount of data as well as in the decision making capability. I thank you all for attending this session and we look forward to meeting you in Japan soon. Thank you. So uh, as we all know that uh, we are in open source and uh, it cannot work without a community and the supporters like uh, you all. Uh, this like I'll just give a quick background about what the Centaurus like we already know about this project, a technical concept, but how it actually started, and what are the key partners that has been involved uh, with this community, uh, and what is our goal uh, so far, where we have been, and what we want to achieve, and without your support, it it again will not be possible. So. Uh, 
as as uh, we discussed, like Centaurus just launched uh, in Linux Foundation officially in des on December 16, 2020. It's still a small baby, but uh, we are still like growing that. And with the support of the great partners like Futureway, uh, uh, Click to Cloud, Great Gain, um, Soda Foundation, Informatics, and a few others. So uh, the partners got involved to discuss the strategy, of course, with the uh, with the great community members and the industry experts. As we all know that there is a huge demand in, in industry. Uh, when we talk about uh, the edge or even the growing number of IoT devices that we use on daily basis, at the same time, uh, the, the medical in industry, healthcare, or even a smart city, like uh, the devices or cameras that are uh, that are based around the places, and it required uh, the uh, the uh, the mechanism to manage and to process the data. We found that there is still a huge requirement in the in industry. At the same time, there is a gap which needs to be fixed, and that is how the Centaurus comes into the picture, um, where we are trying to uh, make sure that how we can make that distributed cloud at the same time uh, provide a multi-tenancy uh, scale this uh, the like uh, the architecture or the nodes at 30 k even in future with the more uh, uh, multiple numbers or thousands uh, nodes so our entire strategy comes into the picture that how we can make that possible we we form a community uh, with uh, with with the voting system or uh, with the support of a different industry and leadership. We got an advisory uh, committee, uh, which is part of Dr. Shong, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Hakim, and uh, Chris from CNCF, uh, where they are part of, on the advisory and then uh, defining the technical or industry uh, requirement, um, even the strategic guidelines that how this community should look like. Uh, then we got like entire technical steering committee of member of seven members elected by again a community and industry uh, where, like Deepak, Prashant, uh, uh, Stephen, Sunil, Shaoning, um, and Nikita. Uh, so we all are, the, I mean, this all technical uh, steering committees there who meets every single month to define the project. To, to make sure that what are the missing parts or even to add a new projects uh, like approving the industry uh, approving the guidelines uh, and making sure that we are meeting the industry expectations that is going to come uh, in the upcoming quarter or even in the current phase uh, with that we got like outreach and marketing committee which is part of Annie and she's not here today but uh, she's also there and myself where we are plan and we are like taking care of the marketing partnership without that which 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 is the core part uh, along with the technical capability so that is how our committee looks like uh, and again uh, along with this committee we have a special interest group like uh, SIGs for each of the modules that Dr. Shang Mengni and uh, Peng have just introduced, like Actros, Mizar, uh, the Edge, and AI side. And whenever we define this project, since it's open source, we all we want you to be part of this uh, community, even this project, and start developing or even giving the suggestions. So this all SIG groups are open source. Uh, I mean, the meetings uh, which we conduct on a weekly basis is open source. You're more than happy to participate and give the suggestions or a recommendation. Even if you want to suggest any project that you think is relevant, that is where we normally discuss and communicate in this forum. So we have four different uh, groups then uh, recently as I mentioned that since this uh, community is uh, I mean a project is still so young but we we got a uh, uh, we recently hosted an event in Asia uh, in APAC region uh, last month where we got a great response from uh, about 12 different countries uh, like a lot of speakers join our industry experts joins from uh, China from uh, India, from France, from um, from the different regions, and they were part of the keynotes. We we successfully launched this event, um, where the traction of that Centaurus project went to 50,000 outreach uh, on the social media channels. Around 1,300 uh, like 10 uh, people registered for that event. Uh, 200 colleges in Asia Pacific showed interest to get that community project in their uh, curriculum activity. Um, 
around 700 plus people joined live uh, during that event. Uh, we got 40 members uh, been part of, out of uh, that event and then who might be a core community members even in future or can be a core contributor uh, during uh, in this centorius project we we announced seven uh, like top awards uh, along with the cash prizes and 32 33 certificates been sponsored by um, our partner i mean click to cloud so this is a uh, public release and uh, announcement that has been published on so, uh, the local and regional newspapers uh, are, are the gifts that we have uh, announced or uh, uh, distributed as well as uh, the, the vision to make this project to the industry like telecom to healthcare and so on. So that is how that vision has been recognized by Government of India as well, which has been published on, uh, on the uh, announcement that you can see on right. So with that, uh, I'm sure that you uh, must be uh, might be interested to know more that how you can join this community and how you can start contributing or being part of this uh, our ecosystem. So uh, you're more than uh, welcome to, to join. Uh, we have our booth uh, entire four days in this, uh, in this event. Um, our team is there. You can feel free to reach out and then uh, talk about the ideas that you have or even the, uh, the feedback in, in case you think or want to learn more about that. Uh, with that, you can reach, uh, go to our website and know more about the Centaurus. Uh, we have our mailing group subscribe that mailing group so you can get new announcement and the latest updates that we have i mean released so far uh, we have our github accounts where you can uh, fork the code try out and uh, like do some kind of activities around it and feel free to share us the feedback um, we saw that we i mean even in that small duration there is thousand lines of code that has been updated uh, in past couple of months from the community contributors like uh, like you all so we welcome all of you to join our uh, group uh, also the slack for any uh, offline communication we have different uh, Slack channels for each of this project and with that meeting information can be also available over there. So I, with that I would, I'll just let the time uh, give back to you to enjoy your lunch and thank you so much for being part of Centaurus and we welcome you all to, to, to grow this community even more further. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Deepak Wage and I'm a cloud technology strategist at uh, Futureway Cloud Lab. In this talk, I will uh, present a deep dive into uh, Centaurus project. Centaurus is an open source project. So uh, Project Centaurus, uh, as I mentioned, is an open source uh, Linux Foundation uh, project. And uh, this uh, uh, Centaurus uh, platform is targeted uh, towards building unified and highly scalable public or private distributed cloud infrastructure. So distributed cloud is a uh, thing to emphasize here and I'll come back to that la uh, later. Uh, Centaurus uh, cloud uh, infrastructure project uh, aims to meet the challenges for new types of workloads uh, such as AI and 5G application land landscape. So these, these workloads uh, typically exhibit uh, characteristics uh, such as uh, you know, mobility, low latency, uh, location awareness, and privacy and security. So, and that's uh, uh, in order uh, for, uh, uh, to address all of these issues, uh, 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 you need a different kind of a cloud infrastructure, uh, which is uh, distributed in nature. So that's what uh, Centaurus, uh, cloud infrastructure is, uh, it's a distributed uh, cloud infrastructure platform to address all of these uh, needs. So uh, Centaurus uh, enables uh, enterprises the hyperscale capabilities uh, that slides towards dramatically changing the economics of uh, enterprise IT. So it essentially allows uh, uh, enterprise IT to build a hyperscaler uh, cloud platform within their own uh, environment, within their own private cloud environment. Now, uh, Centaurus is an overarching packaging, just like OpenStack is uh, uh, overarching packaging for uh, underneath uh, sub-projects such as Nova and Neutron. Uh, similarly, Centaurus has uh, key underlying technology pillars uh, as integrated sub-projects. 
Uh, first of all, uh, these sub projects are the following. Octos is a large scale uh, cloud uh, compute uh, platform, just like uh, Nova is for OpenStack. Meetsar is a high, high scalable and high performant uh, cloud networking. And Fornex uh, is uh, autonomous and flexible edge computing uh, sub project. And Alnair is a, a intelligent platform for AI workloads. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, Octos uh, compute project now, okay? So Octos is an open source uh, project uh, designed for large scale cloud infrastructure. And this was uh, evolved from uh, uh, the upstream uh, Kubernetes uh, code base. And, and it features a lot of uh, similar API objects. You know, the, if you're familiar with the uh, Kubernetes, uh, you know, objects such as pods and replica sets, you know, we have the same, same uh, concept uh, within uh, as part of Arctos, just like uh, Kubernetes. So, but uh, we had to do major surgery and enhancements to upstream Kubernetes in order to incorporate core design changes for enabling the, the, the following key features. Uh, and these features are uh, the unified cloud infrastructure resource support. And we'll get into that, you know, what that means. High throughput and low latency, uh, and multi-tenancy support. So that's... Uh, <clears throat> So, uh, so this is kind of a high level pictorial, uh, the architectural overview of uh, how Arctos uh, looks like. As you can see that, you know, we have partitioned the control plane at every level in order to achieve hyperscale level scalability. Uh, it, it, this, this required major surgery and, and key design changes to the, to the upstream uh, Kubernetes uh, code base. So uh, the, we introduce uh, new constructs uh, such as uh, tenants, tenant partition, resource managers. Uh, so these are all the new con uh, constructs introduced as part of the overarching uh, CentOS uh, uh, architecture. So uh, hyperscale, so now first, uh, uh, the key capability of uh, Actos is the hyperscaler cloud scalability. So uh, public, uh, it, 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 uh, it uh, enables public cloud level scalability. It aims to uh, uh, support uh, 300,000 nodes, physical hosts per region, and uh, uh, about 100,000 nodes per cluster within a, within a region. So you can see that this is a lot of uh, hosts. This is really how hyperscalers uh, run their uh, cloud basically and which you typically don't get that in a, in a upstream Kubernetes or OpenStack uh, environment. And all the, all the control plane components in, in, a, in a Octos, they can scale out independently you know, and they are highly available. So tenant workloads are, are, are uh, partitioned. So that allows extreme uh, scalability. Uh, the multi-tenancy. So, uh, so, so we had to do major surgery in order to enable hard multi tenancy as, as, as a first class citizen, which basically allows multiple customer cloud, uh, 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 cloud instances uh, uh, to, uh, to secure, uh, securely coexist in a single physical uh, Arctos uh, cluster. So essentially you can have multiple uh, tenants in the same physical cluster and with the, uh, with the hard multi-tenancy and one tenant, uh, one tenant is uh, totally unaware of uh, the other tenant in the same physical cluster. So in order for us to do that, this required uh, uh, allowing tenant ID to flow through the, the, the whole entire Kubernetes uh, code, code base. So that includes a namespace aware, API objects and the system level non-namespace uh, API objects as well. So, uh, uh, so the unified runtime orchestration. So the, the contemporary uh, fragmented orchestration stacks for containers and VMs, containers, for example, Kubernetes and VMs, OpenStack, they introduce a uh, lot of issues actually. So uh, issues such as resource pool in inefficiencies, duplicated components, increased maintenance and operation costs. So you need one stack for orchestrating your VMs and you need another stack to orchestrate your containers. So that kind of leads to all of these uh, inefficiencies. So what Arctos does is Arctos introduces the native support of VM 
in addition to the mature container uh, uh, support uh, inherited from the upstream uh, Kubernetes. So by doing that, it provides a unified uh, resource uh, uh, resource pool. And not only that, actually, so uh, it provides an abstraction uh, 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 runtime abstraction, whereby it not only uh, currently supports VM and containers, but in uh, down the road in future, it can support other workloads such as Wasm, Wasi Web, WebAssembly, or Unikernels as new runtimes as well. So it's uh, plug and play actually. So currently, we have enabled uh, the VM uh, in addition to the the container networking as part of uh, 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 as part of Arcos. So the next thing that we're going to cover is uh, uh, is uh, is the Mesa network. So Mesa, uh, just kind of a high level, uh, 30,000 feet level uh, definition. Mesa is the network virtualization layer for our next generation CentOS uh, cloud platform. So large scale cloud platform like CentOS, uh, they need to scale in order to support enterprises, entire global footprint. You see. So they, they so just like hyperscalers do actually. So, so we wanted to, uh, and, and the key thing is, we wanted to support rapid provisioning of cloud resources very quickly, a uh, short span of uh, uh, a lifetime for uh, for workloads such as uh, containers and and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, serverless uh, functions. You see, so from days and hours to minutes, you know, as, uh, and fraction of a second for dynamic for such a dynamic uh, cloud environment. So it's not your. Uh, old uh, way of uh, doing uh, your cloud uh, networking where you maybe spin up a uh, thousand uh, of VMs a day. In, 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 in a dynamic cloud, in a hyperscaler cloud environment, you typically spin up millions of endpoints, you know, containers or serverless. So in order for you to be able to do that, you need a very rapid uh, provisioning uh, uh, support, you see. Yeah. So, so none of the contemporary uh, open source uh, networking solution can measure up to such a large scale cloud requirement. So that's what uh, we, we ended up doing. We ended up building a Midzar virtualization layer from ground up. So, uh, so the problem with the, uh, with the programmers uh, 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 thinking in flow rules, so, so Currently, you know, in the OVS space, uh, typically, if you're building a cloud environment, you would use uh, flow table, flow rules based OVS kind of environment. You see. In a typical uh, such an environment, uh, a control plane typically programs the flow tables on each of the virtual switches on each host using the open flow protocol. So uh, the, the current flow based programming solutions are not scalable. And have they have lots of issues and and quirks? Uh, uh, time to provision ports increases significantly as the number of ports increase. High CPU utilization during flow passing. Packets traverse multiple network stacks on the on the on the same host. Provisioning time of a new workload depends on the number of workloads already existing in the system. So if you're adding a new endpoint to a subnet which spans across multiple hosts, you have to go each and every host to kind of uh, update the, the flow rules uh, for, the, for the new endpoint. So you can see that unfortunately, such an architecture doesn't meet the scaling goals of CentOS uh, hyperscaler uh, grade uh, platform. So to address the scaling challenges, we built from ground up what we call the meets uh, networking layer, virtualization layer in order to route traffic for, uh, much, uh, for virtual networks. So, uh, so why did we have to kind of build the Mitzar networking layer from scratch? So the ongoing state-of-the-art work, there's a lot of good work going on. The OVS, the OVN folks have done it, uh, and there's the Andromeda project, but all of these efforts were still trying to kind of mitigate the, 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 the issues related to flow rules-based uh, system, their yeah, data plane. So they, they're trying to reduce the number of flows passed down to the data plane, you see, so the, uh, to address the challenges which we talked about uh, previously. So instead of doing that, what we did was we took a clean slate approach. Actually. So we, uh, we build our networking network virtualization layer uh, 
the host data plane layer uh, as, as a regular distributed system application. So, uh, 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 so uh, instead of uh, age old uh, networking design constructs such as Mac learning, flood, uh, fl uh, flooding the tunnel and, and et cetera, none of that. Actually. So we built our uh, network virtualization just like you would typically build a distributed system application. And we'll get into that, how we, we did that. So before we get into what meets are, so meets are essentially is built on top of uh, XTP based, uh, uh, XTP, uh, XTP stands for Express Data Path, it's a Linux kernel uh, capability. So essentially it's a, it's a whole space uh, programmable data plane abstraction provided by Linux kernel, okay. And the XTP is a, is a, uh, a Linux kernel hook for uh, running eBPF program within the device driver of the NIC. And when I just kind of a high level, a very uh, brief uh, description of what eBPF is, eBPF is a sandbox program uh, 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 that runs in the Linux kernel without changing the Linux kernel either. So, so, and, and it's, it's a very, uh, uh, it's a very small 4K instruction size and written in any, any, in, in any generic language, uh, some, uh, mostly in C, but you can write that in uh, Rust as well. And all of these ABPF programs are, are, uh, uh, are verifiable uh, programs. Essentially before loading into the kernel, the verifier uh, verifies that there are no loops, there are no wrong pointers or memory allocation and things like that. So essentially what happens is when the packet arrives in the NIC, you, uh, you, you run uh, uh, an imperative, very high level logic in a typical, uh, using typical data structures such as, such as arrays, hash tables, and then make uh, appropriate action to the packets. And the act that those, those uh, actions are, you either pass them to the networking uh, subsystem within the kernel, or you transmit them back to the net, or even redirect them to another interface or drop them. So these are the four typical packet actions uh, you take, but you do that in an imperative manner as opposed to the flow, flow rule-based declarative uh, approach. So this gives you a lot of, uh, 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 kind of an advantage actually so to, to be able to uh, imperative approach is much more powerful uh, as opposed to uh, doing your uh, uh, the network programming uh, using a declarative, declarative uh, flow rule based uh, approach. So, so this is what uh, the high level architecture is. So uh, uh, what we did was as I, as I, as I mentioned before, so we removed everything from the host, uh, such as OV, uh, OVS, Open vSwitch, Linux bridges, IP tables, none of that actually. And what we have is a uh, uh, XTP program running on a main interface and, uh, and we call it the transit XTP. Okay? That's the one you see there at the bottom. And then we have another program on the VF pair that connects uh, to an uh, endpoint. Uh, the endpoint could be a container or a VM, I mean, it doesn't matter. So it's a un uh, unified uh, networking uh, environment. And, uh, and we call that uh, program, XTP program is transit uh, agent. And these programs uh, share eBPF maps, that, uh, which are programmable from the user space by the transit daemon, as you can see that uh, at, the, at the top. So on the management uh, plane, if you would like to push uh, configuration, just make an RPC call to a user space uh, program. And these user space program uh, populate uh, regular maps, uh, you know, uh, hash tables inside the kernel. And that, and uh, all the XCP programs operate on these maps to uh, perform all the packet processing. Uh, so the extensibility. So the XTP programs are very extendable. You know, the, one of the key characteristics is uh, of XTP be able to do a tape call. So instead of having a one XTP program, uh, 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 so we have uh, multiple uh, uh, XTP programs uh, 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 attached to the name. So and the, uh, so so essentially, what, what we have is a one uh, XTP program, which is uh, called a primary XTP program. And depending on certain uh, matching conditions, you may uh, spawn another uh, 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 XTP uh, program, 
uh, uh, by doing a tail call to it. So that makes it very extensible. Actually. So it opens up a lot of opportunities for you to kind of build uh, uh, this uh, uh, extensible uh, networking uh, uh, virtualization there. So it, uh, in summary, so the, the flow programming model is great for programmable switches, but not scalable for multi-tenant uh, virtualized cloud networks. And it's uh, tremendous uh, provisioning throughput and runtime CPU performance gains. Uh, uh, it creates an extensible plugin framework for cloud networking and unifies the network data plane for VMs, containers, serverless, and other workload types. So it doesn't, so from a networking standpoint, it's an endpoint, it doesn't matter if it's VM, containers, or serverless. And uh, other capabilities such as label-based network policy enhancements. So, and uh, one of the key thing is programming the, the be able to offload uh, the XTP uh, logic to the smart tick is, is a, a pretty attractive as well, actually, you see. So, <clears throat> and uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's another uh, uh, thing that was uh, very, uh, we looked at it uh, uh, from the beginning that uh, the, the, the XTP's ability of uh, be able to offload it to a smart nick uh, allows us to kind of have uh, offload all the our our, uh, our infrastructure code to the smart name and then perform all the network packet processing logic there. So that's uh, uh, that pretty much covers uh, uh, meets our networking and uh, uh, the next uh, sub project is for next uh, edge computing. So this is. Uh, <clears throat> So Fornix is an open source uh, edge computing framework for managing uh, compute resources, uh, resources on the edge environment. And this is a uh, project is uh, designed to solve some of the key edge computing challenges, such as limited computing resources, heterogeneous uh, resource types, layer topology, unreliable network and long latency. So with uh, Fornix, the end users uh, edge application workloads to be easily deployed in a distributed hierarchical edge environment with topologies that bet best matches the physical and logical structure. And it offers a high performance, uh, high virtualized, virtualized networking for workload, workloads communicating within and between the edge clusters. So it's not only not south, but uh, be able to communicate uh, east-west uh, across clusters as well. So uh, these are the key features uh, provided by Fornex uh, project. Uh, <coughs> so uh, computing nodes and clusters on the edge. So both computing nodes and full-fledged clusters uh, can run on the edge. We'll, we'll talk about that. I have a, a detailed slide, uh, 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 next slide. And hierarchical, be able to support hierarchical uh, topology. And then flexible flavors. So you can not only uh, in a hierarchical topology, you can not only nest your uh, Arctos uh, cluster, but you can nest your Kubernetes cluster or K3S as well, basically. And edge networking, uh, be able to do multi-tenant uh, edge cluster networking uh, and supporting uh, you know, the constructs uh, such as VPC subnet and high performance inter-cluster communication, the east-west uh, communication whereby the edge nodes, they can directly talk to each other without going through the central cloud, uh, uh, so which is uh, a requirement uh, because of the low latency uh, uh, is highly desired at the edge cloud environment. So this is what the hierarchical topology kind of looks like. You can see that you have a central cloud. Typically, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with the cube edge project, you know, central cloud uh, manages edge nodes but here, what in the Fornex project we have done that is we have gone beyond that. So you not only you have your central cloud manage uh, your edge nodes, but it can manage a full-fledged cluster at the edge, basically. And those clusters in turn can have sub-clusters, uh, the, the uh, sub-hierarchies, basically, you see. So you can have a nested hierarchy. So essentially, <clears throat> So this is uh, what I meant by uh, the, the hierarchical uh, support for hierarchical topology. So essentially, when you uh, are provisioning a workload, you can go to the central cloud, and then depending on your uh, your uh, placement policies, uh, your workload will get uh, deployed 
uh, on the appropriate edge environment, basically. And the edge environment could be just a simple edge node or it could be a full-fledged uh, cluster itself. Alnir is our AI uh, project. Uh, this, uh, uh, so essentially the vision for Alnir project is building an intelligent platform to improve AI workload efficiency. So AI workloads will be uh, a critical dominant workload for the cloud and edge computing. We talked about uh, you know, the emerging 5G and AI application landscape. So the current cloud and edge systems leverage existing hardware software architecture to support new AI workloads. You know, uh, which limits the capability of AI training, inferencing, and also increases the model serving uh, cost as well. So, uh, uh, and uh, the, one of our vision is to be more, more efficient and more intelligent hardware, software frameworks, and architectures uh, in order to support uh, 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 AI workloads and focus on the re resources, uh, resource management aspect to analyze and schedule AI workloads on existing new systems with intelligent methods. We also uh, uh, are exploring new architectures to orchestrate heterogeneous resources and new service model to facilitate uh, AI workloads. So these are the key features uh, 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 provided by Alnair. So elastic platform with self-learning capability, elastic training, dynamic CPU allocation, uh, GPU allocation, GPU utilization profiling, precise resource management, GPU fine, fine tune, fine grain sharing, optimized resource utilization, autonomous scheduler, continuous scheduler decision learning, policy improvement, and optimized uh, ML framework parallelism at the data, data parallelism model and pipeline optimization, and hyperparameters uh, auto tune. There, there are a bunch of other that we're doing very interesting. Uh, inferencing, uh, uh, ML inferencing uh, uh, project as well, uh, collaboration with the uh, University of Washington as well. <clears throat> so this is uh, so, uh, this uh, pretty much uh, concludes uh, uh, this talk. So, and this is, and I can, uh, this is, uh, in the half an hour slot, this is the best I could cover actually. There are tons and tons of information available, a lot of documentation on our website and our GitHub uh, uh, as well. And uh, it, it is, uh, it's a pretty active project and there's uh, tons of uh, work going on in these projects and we'll be very happy to have the community get involved in all of these efforts. You know, the Mitsa networking, Octos compute, Fornex edge computing, and LNAIR AI. So there's a lot of work going on and we'll be very happy to have you folks actually get involved in these projects. So with that, you know, this uh, concludes uh, the pre uh, presentation of uh, Centaurus uh, Distributed uh, Cloud Infrastructure Deep Dive.